Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Derek, and today we're going to go ahead and release the uh, the fourth episode of the Pokecast, because we haven't done one in a while. It's actually been a month, I think. Yeah, we're supposed to have uh, somebody to join us today, but um, Dale's unable to just due to a family emergency. Um, and hopefully the next one, um, things will get better, that way we'll have a guest. But um, a couple things real quick, um, if you guys aren't familiar with the Nerds, it's a really awesome community, uh, kind of close to where I live. Um, it's a really awesome Facebook community of just a bunch of people that care about all nerdy things, um, especially, which is, this isn't nerdy, a, a mental health thing. Uh, they really care about this stuff, and uh, our uh, one of the main members, his name's Nick, uh, he actually had a stroke just recently and he is in recovery um i i believe now he's moved on to rehabilitation which nick if you're watching dude good luck i hope i hope you get better man uh you are probably the heart and soul of this group um and it's pretty awesome because one of the first things he told somebody that went and visited him the first thing he cared about is this fuck suicide initiative that uh, we're trying to do um so nick I hope you uh, recover well, and I hope things go well. Um, so what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about the video games. We're going to talk, talk about three main focuses. Uh, when did I start playing the video games? What's my favorite memory from the video games? And what do I think is going to happen in the future of the video games? Now, we all know that there are some games coming out this year. And you know what they are. I'll talk about them more later. But first, let's go ahead and talk about where it all started. So back in the 90s. Uh, this was, I, 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 I'm old. I was born in 1987, so I guess you can call me a boomer. I guess, I don't know. You can call me whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> but um, when, I was, when I was in elementary school, all the way up until I was in middle school, well, actually mostly through middle school, I was bullied as a kid. Um, I didn't have very many friends, and I was bullied. And... Um, I had to find things to cope with. Well, um, whenever I was in sixth grade, my parents, um, they already had a divorce, um, and we was moving to a new area. So with doing that, I'd be moving to a different school district. And this is basically what everything started. I was in sixth grade. Uh, I haven't even heard of Pokemon yet. Uh, that was, you know, something that hasn't shown up. Like it was just in its infancy. So, on the bus rides, I, I noticed there was this guy on, on the bus with us who was playing his Game Boy. And I asked him what he was playing, and, and he said he was playing Pokemon. So, he had Pokemon Red or Blue. It's either Red or Blue. And I'm, I may get the years wrong. I think it's either 6th or 7th grade when I started. But, um, I uh, was able to find a Game Boy myself. I had a... I found a Game Boy uh, brick version at a yard sale, and I was able to get Pokemon Red and Blue. Well, he had a Game Boy Collar at the time, so I, I was carrying this big-ass brick Game Boy. I don't know if you guys ever seen them. They're huge. They're bulky. They have yellow and black screens, and it, it just looked ugly. And you'd, sometimes you'd have to get like the magnifying glass or the light attachment. That way you can see what you're doing if it's dark. And usually when the bus picked us up in the morning, it was usually kind of dark because the sun hasn't rose yet. And, you know, I lived in the country, so... Yeah, it made things even worse. Um, but the guy, he was a really popular dude in school. And um, I started talking to him. And he asked me if I wanted to play Pokemon. And that's whenever I was like, yeah, I've got a Game Boy. I've got Pokemon Red and Blue. And I already put s several hours into this game. Um, and one of the things I needed help with was there's, there's some Pokemon that you could only get by trade. Uh, so you have a difference between red and blue. One will have certain Pokemon and the other one doesn't have certain Pokemon. So, and there's some Pokemon that can only, uh, evolve through trades. And we use this thing called a link cable. Yes, this is before Wi-Fi. This is before NFC. This is before all of that stuff. So we had, we had me with this giant ass Game Boy and him, he had the atomic purple Game Boy collar. 
we take this cord, we attach it to both the Game Boy Color and, and we, we, we would either battle or we will trade or stuff like that. And it was a whole lot of fun. Uh, I was making a friend the whole time. I didn't really have a lot of friends coming to the school. And he was one of the first people that um, I kind of latched on to. Uh, which, you know, later on, we, we kind of parted our ways. Uh, he, he was a whole lot more popular than me. I was still a, a big nerd. Uh, one of the, uh, I wasn't a reject. It was just, you know, I was just a dude, okay? I wasn't a rich kid. I was just the guy that was there. And my ragtag group of friends that I made was all the same. Um, but, like, it was so fun because, you know, not... Even though I didn't have any friends, I found this common thing that I liked with another person and just coming to school and, you know, we was friends for a while and we did this almost every day. Uh, we would trade Pokemon or, um, especially when the card game came out, like he and I would trade Pokemon cards, um, and, you know, would show off all the new stuff we got. He kind of came in with a Charizard. Then I finally came in with a Charizard that I got from my brother through nefarious means. Which, if you want the truth, what happened was my brother opened up a pack of Pokemon cards and he got a Charizard. So I got a promo Mewtwo from the movie that, that came out. And I said, this card is worth more than that card. And basically he traded me. And I, I knew back then, I was, I was nefarious. I, what can I say? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> but I did have a Charizard. And Karma did bite me in the ass because later on in that school year, my locker got broke into and all my Pokemon cards disappeared. Never seen them again. Then I quit Pokemon altogether for the most part. But some of my favorite memories was, you know, coming to school and looking forward to seeing what Pokemon you caught, uh, he caught, and what I caught. And, you know, there, for a while, like, I spent summer and winter, I, I'd work a lot, did a lot of yard work and everything, and I saved up a, some money, and I bought me an Atomic Purple Game Boy Color and Pokemon Gold and Silver. I bought them the same, same day. And I took it to school, and he and I both, you know, he got it too, so we was playing together and trading Pokemon and it's like some of the best memories in gaming in general like if you look what look back on all the years I've had just make playing video games that's probably one of my favorite moments is making a friend that had no had did not know me he was popular uh, football player jockey dude and he's like you know what I'm gonna play uh, Pokemon with this uh, nerd so we both kind of nerded out, but it was just, you know, people kind of fall away from things, and that's kind of what happened. He was a little bit of falling out. Uh, he stopped coming on the school bus, and uh, he was cool because he, his parents would bring him to school, and I was still taking the school bus, so I was basically playing with myself. Anyways, enough, uh, enough uh, masturbation jokes. But, yeah, it was probably one of my favorite moments in gaming, and... You know, still to this day, I, I still play some of the o older games. Like, two of my favorite games in the whole series is Heart Gold and Heart Silver, which is remakes of Gold and Silver. Um, and I, I really like the Let's Go games, too. It took me back to Kanto. I got to experience that all over again. It's like, yes! So, um, <laughs> we kind of we kind of quit playing at that time. And this is about the time the Game Boy Advance came out. Now, I stopped playing Pokemon because my heart was broken. And the Game Boy Advance came out. I think I was in 8th grade. And I got one. Uh, I, I got one. And I got... Uh, I, I, I forgot what Pokemon game I got. Honestly, I've, I, I'm drawing a blank slate. But I know I had one. Uh, it was between that and Super Mario Karts on the Game Boy Advance. And that got stolen. <laughs> every time I get something really cool like Pokemon wise it got stolen and that's why I'm really really nervous because I've got a lot of Pokemon stuff I have really a really big Pokemon collection uh, especially cards the games and you know I take kind of take pride in that because you know I was coming from a spot where I lost everything I owned basically and I started back from scratch in my life uh, and it was terrible it sucks losing everything I wouldn't recommend it. Wouldn't recommend it at all. But, <laughs> anyways, 
um yeah like as soon as i lost that i stopped stopped playing i didn't play pokemon up until i want to say i was in my 20s and i got a D nintendo ds and i got heart gold and heart silver uh and i played the shit out of those and i went to a pawn shop one day and i found platinum um uh, see what else i found pat platinum pearl and diamonds and um I got them. I had Heart Gold, Heart Gold, uh, Soul Silver, and I was getting ready to play Platinum and stuff for the very first time. Well, I was uh, living with uh, my one of my exes at the time, and she cheated on me when the person that she cheated on me with at my place stole my Pokemon games, as well as a bunch of Blu-rays and all this other shit. This was a long time ago, so <laughs> every time... I get into Pokemon, something bad happens with the Pokemon. It's kind of, it's kind of a curse, you know. Kind of a little bit cursed. I hate to say that, but I am. But, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> that's my favorite moments in the gaming series. Is going back, and especially now. Coming back to uh, Sword and Shield, I was really I got a Nintendo Switch just for the Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Then they announced Sword and Shield, and I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to play this shit. And I did. I played the shit out of these games. Like, I streamed them. It's got me back, like, heavily interested in all of it. I, uh, you know, I, I have my sleeves, my tattoos, basically all Pokemon. Well, a lot of it's Pokemon, not, not all of it. But there's a bunch of Pokemon tattoos, and I'm, you can say I'm pretty heavy into Pokemon. Um, but yeah, like, every time I would get something to do with Pokemon... It didn't matter what it was, it would get stolen. It's like, you're not allowed to have that, man. You, you're not allowed to have that shit. You just can't. You, you're not allowed. You're you're a 33 year old man that likes Pokemon. That's marketing marketed to children. I know that. I know that now. But I don't care. I'm a big child. That's that's just who I am. I'm a huge child, and, and you know I'm not ashamed of it. I still love my Pokemon. My girlfriend, she's super supportive of my hobby. My family's supportive of my hobby. I'm not doing crystal meth or heroin, so, you know. I just uh, switched that out with Pokemon, which is probably more expensive than heroin and crystal meth. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it, it did get kind of bad there for a while because I was buying stuff all the time, which um, but yeah, let's, let's kind of continue though. So the next thing, since we already talked the memories of the games, my favorite memories, and we kind of skipped ahead. Um, the thing I want to talk about now is, uh, the games themselves and how they've grown throughout the years. Now I am missing a gap between, uh, platinum, uh, the, the, you know, platinum, diamond and pearl and, uh, Ruby, Sapphire, Black and White, Black and White 2. Um, you know, I play Sun and Moon, and I played Ultra Sun and Moon, I played Sword and Shield, I played uh, Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Kanto, and I've played all those. And the thing is, is like, the, the core formula of these games, they've never really changed. Yeah, they've added gimmicks like Mega Evolutions, and VMAX, and uh, Battle Pass, not Battle Pass, what is it called? Uh, um, I'll, I'll battle stadium. No, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. But, um, yeah, the, the core, the core experience of Pokemon has not changed since its inception. If you played a Pokemon game on the original Game Boy and you came back, aside from knowing there's now over 900 Pokemon and there's things like evolutions and V maxes, it's the same. It's relatively the same thing. And I like that. I like that. I like the fact that, you know, I could stop at Soul Silver and come back and play Sword and Shield. And I'm like, I, I know how this game works. I, I know this. It's sub And Nintendo does really good with this stuff. I mean, if you take a look at, like, Zeldas and the Mario games and stuff like that, Nintendo is really good at that. They're, they're able to make a game that feels familiar but new. Um, and that goes with, like, the Let's Go Pikachu. They kind of took some inspiration from Pokemon Go. Now, I hopped into Pokemon Go uh, shortly after it released. 
And that was probably one of the biggest things. And that that was huge. That was huge. You, you've seen how Pokemon was. It was taking over the world, just like it is now. But instead of Pokemon Go, it's like Pokemon cards. That's what's taking over right now. You just can't find Pokemon cards anywhere. But Pokemon Go, it's not nearly as strong as it was. I kind of wish there was a resurgence. Because, you know, there's Pokemon I want to catch that I can't catch because I can't find enough people to actually go out and, you know, do a raid. I just can't find that many people. And, like, on the Discord groups I'm in and Facebook groups, you know, a lot of people are f fucking toxic. And, believe it or not, the Pokemon community is very toxic. i just go ahead and warn you now. It's not an easy um, community to be in at all it's just really toxic and that that's either from the new players the old players uh the ones that are in the middle that don't know what the hell and doesn't care that's me i i kind of consider myself in the middle of that i you know i i don't care left or right i'm just here to have fun with my pokemon and try to catch them all which i'm not going to catch them all because i don't have that time I don't have times times a luxury and that's the thing about being an adult. You have to you have to change change things. That way, you know, you can divide your time to rather be a job, school, say if you have kids and you know, chores and all that stuff when you're an adult, things like that change. And that's that's what's kind of crazy right now. A lot of people that are my age that started out with Pokemon Red and Blue they just started seeing a resurgence in popularity of Pokemon. And they're joining in and they're like, I'm just here to have fun. But they can't, you can't really have fun because you got the scalpers and shit. And I'm, I'm kind of focusing on the card game right now, which I, I did last episode. Um, but I spent that and the games at some points, like it's hard to find the games in store. Like, uh, especially... There for a while you couldn't find Sword and Shield, and I, I I don't think you can even find like Let's Go Pikachu or Kanto. Like those sell, I see that on Facebook a lot. People sell the games uh, for astronomical prices. Like it's it's stupid, um, and that's kind of that's one of the things I want to tell you. If you if you have to pre-order your games, your I I normally don't advocate to pre-order video games. I don't usually advocate that because I'm mainly a digital purchase guy. But on the Pokemon games, I, I'm getting all physical games. So today I pre-ordered everything, uh, including Diamond and Pearl remakes, Arceus, Pokemon Snap, which Pokemon Snap comes out on the 30th, which I'm really excited about because we're going to be streaming that. So feel free to hit the follow button uh, if you want to, or the subscribe button, because we're going to be streaming some uh, Pokemon... Um, snap if i can talk <laughs> so this is kind of hard doing this by myself so i mean I'm, I'm trying my best for you guys but um yeah i i can't wait for pokemon snap I, I i tried to stream the original one recently and it was pretty good it, it, i'm not gonna lie it was pretty damn good um i i wish i would have played it when i was a kid but i didn't i didn't have a nintendo 64 and i know that's I was a PlayStation guy. Uh, just going to tell you, Final Fantasy VII, one of my favorite games of all time. I don't think I would have traded it for the world, but I do love me some Pokemon. I love to catch me some Pokemon. And it's just awesome because, like I said, you can go back, you you know, you can be 35 years old, 30, you know, 30, 35 years old, and if you played Pokemon when it first came out, you hop on the Nintendo Switch today, you're going to have that same type of experience with, you know, a bunch of new uh, quality of life things as well as, you know, some gimmicks, stuff like that. But at its core, Pokemon has really never changed. Uh, it's always been, let's go catch the Pokemon. Let's go battle this dude. Let's get our badges and let's do that. And it works. It absolutely works. It's probably one of the best experiences you can have, uh, especially in gaming. It's a really simple RPG. Um, you know, it's basically, it's dad, it's baby's first RPG. That's the best way I can say it. It's, it's for casuals. And, you know, this is where it gets to the point where it's the toxicity comes from. If a game becomes too casual, like Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, 
people get really pissed off about it and they don't want to share that. You're like gatekeeping. It's like, I, you can't come and play our game. That's our game. You, you can't do that. You can't casualize this game. No, that's our game. Fuck off with that. Gatekeepers are terrible. And that, there's a lot of that in the Pokemon community. And, you know, I, I, I hate to say that because I'm a part of the community, but I've noticed, you know, on Reddit, Twitter, uh, Facebook groups, and YouTube, you, you see that. You just see how some of these people are. And it's embarrassing. It's really embarrassing, actually. And... You know, and that's kind of where I want to drop stop up there. We're going to kind of talk about what I think about what's going to happen in the future of the games. So, as we know, we have the Diamond and Pearl remakes coming out. People asked for these for years, and they finally came out to little fanfare. Well, everybody thought it was going to be like a Sword and Shield type game, uh, but it's going to be Diamond and Pearl. But we're getting chibi graphics that kind of look like the original game. But on the Inside Battles, it does look like Sword and Shield. And I'm excited about that because it's it's a it's basically a one-for-one -one remake. It's just different art style. And the art style is it's fine to me. Like, I, I don't care. As long as the gameplay is there, as long as I can catch all these Pokemon and enjoy the story, I don't care. Like, I don't care what the art looks like. Graphics don't make the game. It helps. It's nice. But it doesn't ultimately make the game. And one of the things I was looking forward to, and this is kind of why I want to talk about the future of the games, is, you know, I was hoping during the amount, announcement on Pokemon Day that they was going to announce a Let's Go um, Johto. Like, I wanted to see a Let's Go reimagining of Sol Silver and Gold. Which we didn't get that. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee sold a lot. It done well. A lot of people joined in on that. And they absolutely liked it. Some did. Some didn't. Some people, again, gatekeepers, are like, Nah, you can't play the game like that. That's stupid. That's stupid. But you're kind of seeing that too with uh, the Diamond and Pearl remakes. They're just being like, Nah, it's not for me. It's... And they try to put that toxicity on other people for actually liking it. Which that's the thing that bugs me like a whole lot. It's like, you know, why don't you just let me like something? I have expectations. But if I, you know, all those expectations are not met. I'm cool with that. That's fine. But some people are like, I have super high expectations. And they have to be met. It's called entitlement. And it's fucking terrible. Another word, gatekeepers. But one of my th favorite things that came out from this whole Pokemon 25th anniversary pertaining to the future of the games is Pokemon Arceus. I think it's Legends Arceus. And it looks like if Breath of the Wild had sex with Pokemon. And that's the offspring. The graphics kind of look similar to uh, Breath of the Wild. The catching mechanics looks really cool. It's... Um, it seems like it's all seamless. It doesn't seem like there's transitioning like random encounters. Uh, I think you just walk up onto them and you can choose to battle them or just throw the ball like hiding in the weeds, which is really cool because that's something I would really want. I think I think you know people that wanted a console Pokemon game, the game they've always dreamed of. I'm thinking that w this game is going to be that. I don't know. We don't know a lot about it. We do know that it is a. It takes place in a earlier history prior to all the games, and it looks pretty cool. And to me, it looks cool. Um, and I'm kind of hoping with if this does well, which I hope it does. I hope it's not um, not terrible because that'd be a shame. But the way I'm looking at it. I'm thinking if this works right, maybe this will be the new way Pokemon works from here on out. Maybe they'll still have you know your regular hand handle handheld uh, Pokemon, but maybe this new style will be a new era of that, and we kind of go from there. And that's what I'm hoping in the future of Pokemon when I see that, 
you know, I like to see things. I would love to see, you know, Let's Go Johto. I like the Let's Go series. I just want to relax and catch the Pokemon. And that's kind of what I want to see with that. I, You know, I'd like to see the Let's Go series continue. I'd like to see more experimentations with things like Pokemon Arceus. That's pretty cool. And if they want to keep on remaking the games and they want to do it similar to uh, the Diamond and Pearl remakes, I'm all down for that too. Even, hey man, if they could do some remasters, I'm sure they could do remasters of things like X and Y and Sun and Moon, just kind of carry them over to new, new devices, which I'm surprised that this year they did not, you know, announce some type of anthology, which that would have been really cool. I think in the future we may see that, but another thing I think what may happen is there will be a Pokemon type MMO. This is speculation of things that happen in the future. This is what I think is going to happen. And anyways, I'm thinking what ultimately will happen is there will be an MMO type game, but set in the Pokemon universe. And I think how that's going to work is they're going to use things like, because I think Microsoft is in cahoots with Nintendo right now. They're actually bringing over Game Pass, supposedly. And I would, wouldn't be surprised if they use their Azure, Azure um, cloud, cloud systems to create this world. This, this is my hopes and dreams for this Pokemon um, franchise. I would love to see an. I, I don't want to play in a subscription for it, but if you want to give me a sixty dollar base game where I can connect with hundreds of other players, and if you want to put things like cosmetics in there, that's fine. That's fine. I'm fine with cosmetics, but as long as it doesn't hurt the game, I'm fine with that. But I would love to see that. Like you get your you and your friends, and they kind of did something similar to this. Uh, with the um, one of the expansions for Sword and Shield, uh, I forget the name of that specific thing. It's where you can actually fight the legendaries, but you have to rent Pokemon. But you have a team of four people, and you also have the raid battles um, with you know online raid battles, which is pretty cool. But could you imagine that on a bigger scale, where you can actually go to different uh, continents and you know those Pokemon that are only exclusive to that region um they're there and you just meet up with people do raids find legendaries uh create clans um start your own gym that would be really really cool i mean could you imagine you have a group let's say the nerds for instance we're like we're a really good community and we have a lot of people but we got like 250 people that's got a nintendo switch that wants to play pokemon online so we create our own gym Create our own gym, put out, uh, you know, build our build everything. And people will come to us, um, give some type of creation thing where people can buy stuff within that's not with real money. I, me and microtransactions just don't get along. But you can actually craft things. People can come and buy stuff and kind of create uh, economy within the game without using real money. I think that would work. That would be amazing if they could pull something off like that. Maybe Pokemon Arceus is a step to that. I don't know. And maybe the the whole talks with Microsoft with Game Pass coming along. I don't think you'll see Pokemon on a rival system like Xbox. I don't see that happen. But I see them possibly using Microsoft's Azure Cloud stuff for development of this actual thing. And I... I would buy it day one. I, I definitely would. It's, it'd be pretty damn cool just to try it out and hang out with everybody. And I hate MMOs, but I would play the shit out of that. Like, I would. Like, day one. But as far as everything goes, guys, um, next episode, uh, we'll have somebody else on here with us. Um, we'll probably still kind of talk a little bit more into this um, and have another person's perspective because I want to kind of bring people in and kind of get their opinions on everything and just see where things go. And I'm pretty excited, pretty excited about it. But guys, feel free to hit that follow button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, once this comes up on the Nerds channel, you'll start seeing the original episodes 
moved over to there. And other than that, guys, you guys have a great day. I'll see you soon. And keep on catching them all. Catch all the Pokemon. Every single last one of them. See you guys.